Hello guys, I am in Edinburgh at the Fringe Festival and we are gonna do some street photography. I'm gonna share with you some tips, the equipment that I use, the techniques that I use, and I'm gonna show you around this beautiful city and the Edinburgh Fringe Festival. For those of you that don't know, the Fringe Festival is a performing arts festival held in Edinburgh once a year for around about three weeks in August and it's a vibrant place. The problem is it's in Scotland and it rains a lot in Scotland and it literally has been raining for about three days solid. We've just got a break in the cloud today. So I'm gonna get out there, do some filming, do some photography and share it with you. But before we do all of that, let me show you around this beautiful city and the fringe. <laughs> about the equipment that I like to use when it comes to street photography. I like using a standard lens and I'm using a full frame camera today. I'm using my Canon 5D and a 50 mil prime lens. I can't actually show it to you right now because I'm filming on it, but right now is a lovely overlay of that camera that I'm going to be using. So a standard lens is Azure Eye sees and on a full frame camera, it's 50 mil focal length, which I've just told you about, the lens that I'm using. And on a crop sensor, it's around 31 mil. On a micro four thirds camera, you're looking at a 25 mil of focal length. Now I like using that because it gives you quite a realistic look. And that's what I like when it comes to street photography. Now, other people use wider angles and that's entirely up to whoever wants to do the shots. I am only telling you what I prefer to do in this video. Some people use 35 mil focal length full frame. Some people use 24 mil entirely entirely up to you and I much prefer to use a prime lens when I am doing street photography I think that your limitations when you are taking photographs force you to be creative and a prime lens certainly does that because you have to get closer move further back frame things better really because you can't zoom in or out very quickly so I really do prefer a prime lens and just like Robert Kappa said if your photos are not good enough you're not close enough and a prime lens forces you to get in there and get the shot. Okay, let's show you a few pictures and then I'm gonna to talk to you about the settings and techniques I use. Okay, so I've come to a place called Greyfriars here in Edinburgh, which is a really famous tourist attraction. And I've come here because I wanna to talk to you about something that people do quite a lot when they go to touristy places. They photograph the obvious. So just remember that the obvious stuff like places like this in Edinburgh, there's a really cool story about Greyfriars Bobby, which is a dog, look it up, it's very heartwarming. Um, but loads of people come here and loads of people take the obvious shots. And here is that obvious shot now. Now that's all well and good. And if that's what you wanna do and that's the type of photographer that you are, then fine. But for me, I wanna capture the essence of a place. And we got the Fringe Festival on here and it is so cool and so vibrant that that's what I wanna capture and that's what I wanna show people. And actually, I'm gonna be much more interested in what you see that I don't than the obvious, such as Greyfriars Bobby. What you are interested in 
is going to be interesting to me. So look for the unobvious. Look for things that specifically stand out to you and photograph them. And also try and photograph them in a different way. For instance, we've got loads of street performers here. How about focusing on the street for performer through the crowds or even photographing people photographing the street performers because to me that is what's interesting my interest is the reaction of the people to the fringe festival and that's what i'm trying to capture here so let's show you a bit more of this city and then i'm going to talk to you about the settings that i use So it's literally started to pour down with rain again but I've managed to find this really cool place to do this bit of the video and talk to you about the settings that I use. Now I like to shoot at an aperture at f2.8 which gives you a really shallow depth of field. Now that is not common with you know general street photography if you like. A lot of people like to use f8 or above because it gives you a longer depth of field which means that if you miss the focus point it's not going to matter too much now when you shoot at f2.8 like i do you have to get the focus point absolutely bang on and i have lost a lot of shots as a matter of fact by just missing that focus point but it's the risk that i take because i love that look now when it comes to camera settings depends on the light. If it's a really bright day, I will just put it onto aperture priority, put it on f2.8, and I know that the shutter speed will be quick enough to capture movement so that it doesn't blur. And if it's not a bright day, if it's cloudy or you're in a setting like this where there's not much light, then I might put it onto fully manual, set the shutter speed to 125th of a second to make sure that you capture movement and put the aperture on f2.8 again. And then I'll let the ISO pick up the slack. So on my camera here, I can put it on auto ISO actually, and it will automatically set the ISO for you. Yes, you might get a bit of noise, but when it comes to street photography, believe me now, it's all about getting in the shot just get that shot if there's noise there's noise if you've missed the focus point a bit you've missed the focus point a bit if you've mixed it totally then obviously it's no good but just try and get the shot get the feeling of the place and get what you want and another reason I use f2.8 and a as your ICs focal length 50 mil on my full frame camera is because it is wicked for street portraits and street portraits I think is one of the most challenging subjects to tackle because not only do you have to have all your settings right and all your style right if you like you've got to interact with people you you've got to ask them and be bold enough to go up to them and ask them if you can take their portrait. That sounds easy but actually it's not, especially if you're not used to doing it and it takes practice. I've taught this so many times to people and very rarely do they come back with a good street portrait first time because it's all about confidence really and knowing what to say and just having your own way with people. And I suppose the only advice I can give to you when it comes to this is to be yourself, be genuine, go up to people, tell them what you wanna do, and, and if they're good for a portrait, then that's great. And if they're not, just walk away, don't worry about it. The beauty of being at the Fringe Festival of all is you have loads of performers. You have loads of people that love being in front of a camera and I've taken some brilliant street portraits over today doing my street photography. I think my favourite one was the one that I took down at the Scottish Parliament down there of a young girl with a mask on her face. Right, let's show you a bit more of the fringe and some pictures and I'll come back to you in a minute.
So we've got an opera singer behind us here and that is the Fringe Festival for you on every single street corner, on every single green bit of land, in every pub, in every cafe, there is a performer and it's just a brilliant place. So make sure you get yourself down in. Now since I last filmed, we have had rain and sunshine about six times. But during that time, I've managed to take a load of pictures for you and I'm gonna show you them in a minute. And at the very end of this video, I'm gonna show you my favorite photo of the whole day. A little bonus for people that hang on till the end. Now before I show you all of them, don't forget to come over to theschooloffotography.com if you want to learn photography properly. We are professional teachers. We've been teaching since 2002 and we deliver learning in a structured way so that the photography knowledge stays with you. So come over to theschooloffotography.com. We've got loads of courses for you, loads of freebies. Come over and check that out. Okay, here are all of the pictures that I have taken today together with some more video. Don't forget to like this video, share it with your friends, subscribe, and make sure you hit that bell button. Enjoy all these photos, and I hope to see you in the next video. In Scotland before you, where me and my true love will never meet again. On the bonny, bonny banks of Loch Lomond, you take the high road, and I'll take the Lord road, and I'll be in Scotland before you, where me and my true love will never meet again. On the bonny, bonny banks of Loch Lomond.